Okay. So you got a bunch of voodoo going on with this one. <laughs> this this one's cool. I'm really, really happy with, with how this one works out. Okay. So let's look at our test episode number 9995. And then again, since this is a behind the scenes, I'm just going to have my, usually I have my notes off to the side, but I'm just going to do it right here. So what is a segment? This is cool. Um, now, a segment is a pre-planned thing that we're going to talk about. So I, like we, as we've been talking throughout this live stream, a segment is, okay, here's a discrete piece of the conversation. We know ahead in advance what that's going to be. Um, now, we generate this little video transition, um, and what we're generating that video transition for is for um, recognition to later chop up our video into different segments um, so that we don't have to do that manually. So that's what I was doing for the first uh, 12 or 13 episodes was watching the episode in advance, taking a note of the time in milliseconds that it started and ended, and then making the highlights from there. But that was a really painstaking process. And then plus, recognition has... Um, well, we'll talk about what recognition is later, but the idea is we, we basically want to make our show so that it's really, really easy for recognition to discuss when we're talking about different segments. So I think what I can do is just show you how it works, and then, um, and then we'll go th or show you what it does, and then we'll go through how it works. Okay. So here's our live stream view. We've got this demo live stream number 9995. And then in that demo live stream, we want to, let's say that we wanted to talk about some segments that we wanted to talk about. I think I wrote this down here. Let me do a different filter so I can show you this one. Greater than 9900. Okay. So here is... Here's a, another test episode that we've made. Um, and we have the, these type of segments. So let's, let's make another segment that's basically the same. Um, I'll show you what the test episode looks like. So I've got a test episode that starts out with our standard introduction. And then I, I pull up a segment. And then we talk about something on the... Um, on the browser window, and then another transition plays. And so I want to generate these, these videos for these transitions. Okay, so let's, now that I think I've set up the problem, let's actually, let's go ahead and do it. So let's make a new task, and let's call this segment. Uh, we'll call this the intro segment. And this, we're going to call it a task of type segment. It's going to be episode number 9995. And this relates to, relates to our streaming segment. Or sorry, stream. Excuse me. This is our test stream up there. Okay. Okay, so here's our test stream with new transitions that we're making. That's our, oh, here we go, demo stream, sorry. Let me filter this back to equals 9995. Okay. Let's make our segment. So we're going to make a segment in LS tasks segment uh, introduction. YouTube DL has a JavaScript interpreter. Okay, so this is of type segment. It's episode number 9995. It is associated with stream task of demo stream. And then we're going to call this segment title YouTube DL has a JavaScript interpreter. Okay, let's create that task. And so that's going to show up here. Now, if I make this view a little bit wider, right now this is an open task. We don't have anything. But then what I can do is if I, if I advance this to in progress, it's going to then call a webhook. 
which is going to give us one of these transition videos. Let's, so if we refresh this, refresh the ClickUp U, uh, UI, and we should, you should get it back fairly quickly. It might take another second or two. And usually, Stephen, how many episodes or how many segments do we create in our one-hour video? So it's usually about six. Okay, yeah. so it, so, all right, so now it came back and here's what I've got. That looks okay. pretty neat. Yeah, and so what it did is, again, with automation, I've got a, within, within the LS tasks automation, I've got a, an automation which says, when this happens, okay, generate transition video when segment goes from open to in progress. And this is calling this, which I have to change now, it's calling this Lambda, Lambda function URL. And so what that, all that does, um, well, it's actually an interesting pattern that, that evolves. Let me go back to this view. So I found that when we, when we have this automation that uses this web hooks, we actually have to do this two-step pattern. Now, usually automations, they want to return instantly, but it takes a few seconds to generate this video. And so what we end up doing is the first Lambda will push a task to SQS. And then the second Lambda function uh, will, I'm, I'm allowing that to take the 10, 15, 20 seconds that it needs in order to generate that video. Um, so that's what we're doing here. We generate the, this segment. Uh, and later we want to say, okay, this, this is the segment order. This is going to be the first segment in our live stream. Uh, we can say, okay, is there an article that we're discussing here? Let, let's see if there's an article that we're discussing. I had this in my notes here. Yep. We're going we're gonna to discuss this article here. Article URL there. And this is... And in the segments also, once, once we've discussed the segments, sometimes we, we rate them as either simplicity or complexity. And so this is right. where I'm tracking that after the fact. I'll say, okay, this one is simplicity. And then we'll give it our number of clouds out of five. And so I'll put this here. Okay, so that's, that's our segment. Um, and so what we do is once this video gets generated, we then go into StreamYard and we have to populate, so just sharing this here, these are the different segments that we populate so that while we're talking, we can, we can then queue those segments. So showing you the source of that, that code, again, I know it's a bit, here we go. Let me open this up here. I have another window here that has the Lambda function. Give me one second. Okay. My green window is the one that has, I thought I had refreshed the session, but it had expired. <laughs> and once you get that working, Stephen, can we zoom in a little bit into that? Absolutely. Hey, give me a, uh... I'm going to need to use my phone because I'm going to need to use my MFA. So give me one second Always here. Always best practice. Use two-factor authentication. <laughs> All right. And my phone is also my camera. So excuse me for one second. <laughs> Authenticator 242609. Okay. There we go. And we lost you, Stephen. Uh, we lost your video. There we, there we go. <laughs> so that, this will be a separate behind the scenes. But the, the, what the camera does is it runs this thing called Camo because my iPhone camera is so much better than a webcam. And so I just use that as a camera. Um, okay, so here's my, my Lambda function that's really doing all this stuff. It's calling this API called ShotStack. And so ShotStack... It basically takes a JSON payload that represents the video that we want to make. So what, what it starts with is it starts with this blank transition template. 
it starts with this blank transition template and then there's this big spot right here and then what the lambda function does is it gets the the right data out of the task it says okay here we go it gets the right data out of the task and then injects this injects the the title into that video and then we this lambda function has a, a longer timeout and then here is where we update the ClickUp custom field to have the URL of the video. And so then once that populates, I can then download them and populate StreamYard. I don't forget um, to do that. Because <laughs> I've done that you know, several times when, oh gosh, I forgot to generate the transition videos. It's, we're going live in five minutes. Um, so that's yeah. having the automation done uh, is really, really helpful. Yeah, by the way, even though this seems like a live stream and you know, might seem like everything is happening you know um as it happens that does happen as well but there is a ton of planning that goes into the structure of each show um we do plan for a lot more than we actually get through in every episode usually so that planning is incredibly important if you want to do a show and you know keep it interesting Oh, I really underestimated it. But now that I've now that we're in the streaming world, I've seen something some ratio of minutes of live contents to minutes of planning, and it's like one to twenty. It's, yeah, or one to fifty. It's it's a lot. <laughs> now this one, um, we're showing all the live stream, all the automation that went into it. Um, but anyway, I think so. What we end up with when we do all these transitions is we'll have this live video that Streamyard will give us a recording at the very end of it. And because these transitions have these black frames here, this is what will then give us our highlight detection, which we'll demo uh, coming up. All right. Well, anything other questions for the um, the segment generator? No. This this seems really cool. The fact that you can actually take a base template and then just insert all the specific headers and it generates all the standard segment you know markers for you. That's pretty cool. Now this. And just as a little shout out, this is a, um, it's the API is called shot stack and they have the cleverest advertising that I've seen because what they actually do is they publish a ton of how to's on how to use FFmpeg. And then what you realize when you're reading this is I'm never, ever, ever going to be able to get this right. Scripting this together. <laughs> FFmpeg is so fragile. And at the very end, they're just like, oh, you can just pay us a couple bucks and we'll do it all for you. Here's a JSON payload that you can do. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, scripting FFmpeg is a, I'm glad that they've done that and I'm happy to pay them. And it goes with our stitching things together, right? Don't invent it yourself. Exactly. Stitch together an existing service. Um, this, this is, there's, I don't want to know how many special edge cases they've dealt with, but I'm happy <laughs> to, uh, to share that cost with all the other shot stack clients. Completely agree. All right. Well, let's do a quick uh, break. And then when we come back, we're going to show dev spaces to deploy lambdas with function URLs. Cause that's been a really handy bit of this, um, especially with these web, with these automations, when you want a quick web hook, um, lambdas with function URLs is the way to go. So let me trigger this, uh, this break. Public cloud costs going up and your AWS bill growing without the right cost controls? CloudFix saves you 10 to 20% on your AWS bill by focusing on AWS recommended fixes that are 100% safe with zero downtime and zero degradation in performance. The best part? With your approval, CloudFix finds and implements AWS fixes to help you run more efficiently. Visit cloudfix.com for a free savings assessment. 